I lived that moment because none of us had our camera phones out. None, none of us were documenting it for Instagram. Yeah. It was real interaction. And if you're a good guy, it wasn't based on a number next to your name. It was down to the fact that you're a shit bag or you're a fucking good guy. Do you look back on certain times as like, these were the happiest times because the, you, your life had a very clear direction. And then you look back on it and it's like, these people that I looked up to now are my peers. And how awesome was it that I got to work out every day, to, got to do this? Like, I, I think about certain times, you know, or my early days moving here mm -hmm. to Las Vegas, like some of the guys that are now executives at these hotels were dudes that I used to just hang out with or they were door, door guys at nightclubs. Yeah. And now these guys are huge. Is it feel like that for you? That do you what, what point in your career do you look back and be like, man, that was, that's when it was most fun? Good question. I've never been asked that actually. <sighs> off, off the, off the hip, yeah. That's probably one of them. Only because I was that kid who had bodybuilding in my hand every single day. Yeah. Literally, the magazines were my bible. I woke up, I read, I, I had VHS tapes going all day sure. long. So when I had the ability to jump on that plane and then go to Gold's Gym and to see to see these guys come into fruition and now full circle to, like I said, to call my friends. It's, uh, it's definitely been uh, a full circle moment, but there was many times that I've, I would say, I wouldn't say my, my happiest, but there was, there was certain times where I was like, wow, and they were when I had nothing. You had fewer distractions. Like I remember, I remember times earlier when I had nothing and it was like maybe right out of college or whatever. And I just remember fewer distractions, mm -hmm. but right. There, but I look back at those times and man, I really wish I had cherished some of those, even though I have more now yeah. and more to appreciate. I look back at those times and I'm like, man, the journey is so great yeah. when you, when you consider it, right. All those, those moments that you had. I remember like walking into Fullerton, the, yeah. the gym that Milos Sachev had. Milos is now training in my gym. It's called okay. Full Circle. So he had a gym that was an old powerhouse that he renamed Coliseum Gym. And that's where the flex photo shoots would take place. And every single day, you didn't really know who was going to, to, to be walking through them doors. And through um, Milos being the, the, the crazy fucker he is, he would literally be like, okay, so-and-so is coming in today. You're training legs then. And I was like, uh, I trained legs yesterday. <laughs> so and so is coming in today and you're training legs in. Yeah. Okay. And that's how I earned the respect. Also, yeah. with the nickname Flex. When these guys met me, it was like, there's one already a Flex body. And I was like, well, this is my name. This is this is who I am. Yeah. And I had to earn my stripes and 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 make that known as like that other person, the legend, Flex Wheeler, that's him. But this is this is who I am and this is my name since yeah. school. So uh, training with these guys, I literally earned my stripes through sweat equity. And uh, as time has gone, these guys then became uh, followers of mine. And then I've, stood, I've actually stood on stage and beaten some of these guys who mm. I actually trained with way back in the day. But that moment of me being in the gym, and then I literally lived in the gym, to be truthful to you. Um, I, I would turn up every single day, not knowing who was going to turn up. And I would watch these guys, um, how, what they'd done for the photo shoots, how they'd done the photo shoots. And it was like a playbook. Yeah. No, nobody ever taught me anything. The, you're talking about the posing. I'm, I'm talking yeah. about the photo shoots, how it was set up. Yeah. All the intricate things that go on behind the scenes, how these guys prepare for, for that photo, that one photo that lasts a lifetime, what goes on just to take that picture. And back then, there was a photographer called Chris Lund. Okay. And Chris Lund, he would, I remember when I shot with him, I, I realized soon enough why he was known as the crazy fucker he was. He would ask you, how much can you pick up in the off season? And of course, you want to give him something impressive, sure. right? Uh, you know, 150s. He's like, okay, I need you to pick up the 150s, and I need you to give me two reps. I'm like, I'm, I'm dehydrated and dry. Yeah. There's no way I'm doing two or three reps. There's yeah. no way. He was like, and then he started talking shit, because he's British too, so he had that accent. He's like, oh, you wanker. Come on. I was like, Jake Carlos in here yesterday doing it. And I was like, oh, my. Okay. Yeah, that was that was some of the best times. And as I'm talking about it now, so I'm getting flood of of uh, nostalgia coming back. But them times were very special to me, and they can't be duplicated. Yeah, it's very hard now because social media has kind of taken that element away because it was the social media was in its infancy stage back then. It was just MySpace. Yeah, and nobody was coming to the to the gym with a phone or coming to the gym with a camera. If anything, the only time you got recorded was um, the Mitsuru stuff that. Jay Cutler put out all the DVDs and yeah. stuff. So that would be the only time anybody would be recorded. So all that, all that era was missed. And that was some incredible stuff that went on behind the scenes. But 
I can also flip the coin and go, I lived that moment because none of us had our camera phones out. None, none of us were documenting it for Instagram. Yeah. It was real interaction. And if you're a good guy, it wasn't based on a number next to your name. It was down to the fact that you're a shit bag or you're a fucking good guy. Yeah. And that's, and that's how I had to earn my stripes through that era. So I've had one foot in the magazine era and one foot in social media. And I lived that life. I yeah. was actually the last athlete, myself and Phil Heath, were the last Flex magazine athletes uh, before all contracts got taken away. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow.